بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ولا سيما سيدنا محمدا المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وازواجه واحبابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته looking at the topic obviously of uh, the events of Sayyidina Adam alayhi wa ala nabina wa alihi afdalu salah wa azka salam we are found with few things that Al-Quran Al-Kareem puts as a framework of how to look at it and obviously in order for us to imbibe and imbue from it as much as possible so we can correct ourselves um we need to sort of keep that first framework because it seems like Adam alayhi salam is not just Adam in a sense as a story that happened and it ended and it's gone but it is Adam within each of us as we are the children of Adam in that sense at the beginning I'd like to always say that Al-Quran Al-Kareem and a sunnah and nabawiya sharifa ala sahibiha wa ali abdul salla wa azka salam emphasized always on the tazkiya qad aflaha man tazakka tazkiya is purification of the heart al quran emphasized on the purification of the heart rather than the beautification of the outer so beautification of the inner is more important than the beautification of the outer now no one is saying there is no need to beautify the outer side but the emphasis of the quran is qad aflaha man tazakka successful is he or she who seeks purification at the same time, Al Quran Karim obviously warns us from claiming purification. لا تزكوا أنفسكم هو أعلم بمن يتقى. Don't claim purification to yourself. Allah knows the one who has reached that. With this understanding, you see the ahadith that came in. Us, as Al Quran Al Karim said, the human being was created weak. All right? Such as the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith Abi Huraira, fi sa'afwan, hadith Abi Huraira, aywa, it is, fi sa'ih al Imam Muslim, when a Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, Walladhi nafsi biyadih lawlam tuznibu. By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, if you were not sinners, had you not law, harf imtina al imtina, it means had you not been sinners, Allah would have replaced you with people who sin and they seek Him for forgiveness, so He forgives them. But the meaning of the hadith, you were our sinners. And obviously, why is Al Mustafa وسلم, telling us that? Notice, obviously, he's telling that to the Sahaba, عنهم, ajma'in, faman ba'dahum, then those who come after them. And we understand that the Sahaba being the best of generations, yet he's still telling them, by Allah, if you are not, if you do not sin, in other words, if you, had it not been that you do sin, Allah would have changed you, but you do, so that's what it is. Hadith al-Hakim with Tirmidhi or others that narrated it, al-Hakim authenticated the hadith, uh, though the sad has issues, yani maybe, لكنه حسن, inshaAllah, لغيره. <coughs> 
where the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the authority of Anas, where the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kullu bani Adam khattaa wa khayru al-khattaa'ina tawwaboon. All the offspring of Adam are sinners, but the best of sinners are those who repent. Why Al-Mustafa is putting us in this framework? What does this have to do with Adam and, uh, and the whole events that happened there? As if a Nabi is foreseeing the claim of some who want to appear to others and maybe to delusionally to themselves as malaika or as angels. As people who are flawed free, flaw free, nothing, no imperfections, they want to appear like angels. Where Al Quran Karim and Sunnah Sharifa is telling them, You are sinners anyway. So there is no need to claim to appear like angels because it does not exist. You are not angels, and angels are not you. In effect, what Al Quran and Sunnah is trying to tell us is simple: the perfection or the path to perfection for you human beings is not that path of the malaika. That is not your path of perfection. You can never be there, and it doesn't mean that that path is better than your path. But your path of perfection is the path of your father Adam. Alayhi salam. That is your path of perfection. If you go through the path of perfection of Adam, who chose, let's say, khilaf al awla, less than the best <clears throat> when he ate the tree, or who asa, as Al Quran mentions, when he did eat from that tree, other than obviously the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then what he did is, so let's say, that kind of mistake in this context, then he did go to repentance, and after repentance, he became closer to Allah than he was before. Allah says, Thumma Then Allah made him closer. And many of the ulama obviously talk about that, that ijtiba, he became, now Allah conferred upon him the prophecy. He made him closer. What the Quran is trying to say, the path of perfection is that path of Adam who chose less than the best. Then he repented and that's how he became perfected. So he was eligible so that the malaika who in our sense are perfect and sin free to make sujood to him out of honoring him. It's not the other way around. Your path of perfection is this path. وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ By Allah with whom my self is with if you do not sin had it not been that you do sin that's a better translation I think Allah would have changed you but you do and your path of perfection is that when you sin you get up you look in the right direction and you move in the right direction. You make istighfar, you repent, and you move. That is your perfection. Not the lack thereof. So there is no need to act like angels. That's one thing to know ourselves because talking about ourselves and what, how can we do that. There's another parallel. That's why Al, Al Quran Al Karim speaks about, you all know, speaks about Al Malaika. When Allah told him, told them in Ijailun fil Ardi Khalifa, I will be appointing a successor on earth to the Malaika. Obviously, Malaika Ibadun, Al Malaika, they are honorable creation, they don't sin, they don't disobey, all these things. Immediately what they said, Kalu Atajalu fiha may yufsi do fiha wa yesfi kuddima. Ya Allah. You are going to put on earth people who do corruption and bloodshed. They're asking him not out of inkar or in the sense of how come you do this, but out of istifsar. Huh? Istifsar inkari in a sense. 
قال هذا ربي فلما أفل قال لا أحب الآفلين anyway they're asking them يا الله you're gonna put someone basically the meaning of the ayah who will cause corruption and blood and, and bloodshed the reason why ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك and we as angels are absorbed in your glorification and تسبيح and men and remembrance of you that's why because it is istifsar rather than inkar yani asking why what's the wisdom allah told them inni a'lam so they're asking for ilm why is that he's telling them inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun i know that which you do not know anyway the point from the angels as if we can maybe read between the lines is that as if the angels al malaika thought that if anyone is worthy of being the khalifa of allah on earth it's supposed to be those who are in absolute absorption in the remembrance and the dhikr and the tasbih huh? and taqdis and the tahmeed of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ The hamd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqdis, the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, isn't that what should make us eligible for the succession, for the representation يعني, of Allah on earth? That's what I mean by succession here. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them differently. إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا تَعْلَمُونَ That being... 24-7, if we were to say, any time is applicable to us. Time is, a, is an issue, it's a creation. Uh, but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ As this being a representative of Allah on earth does not necessarily mean that you are absorbed your whole day in tasbih and taqdis. وَلَكِنْ سْتَعْمَرَكُمْ فِيهَا He's the one who puts you on earth and Allah says, Sta'marakum. Sta'marakum in the Quran means, Talaba minkum i'maraha. He asked you to positively contribute to earth, to work. I'malu ala Dawuda shukra. O oh, family of Dawood, if you want to express your thankfulness to Allah, then you need to manifest it in deeds, in amal. So you have to work and therefore the khilafah of Allah or the representation of Allah on earth is not limited to matters of being absorbed totally in the dhikr and the tasbih and the taqdis in that sense but the amal and the positive contribution and the building of earth استعمركم means asked you to build it asked you to make it better than when you received it you received it much better. If you received it, if when you enter the world, it was much better than when you departed. There's a problem that you may have not done your deed. You may have not done your job because your job as a representation of the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, on earth is that you positively contribute to it. You give back to it, not you just simply take. It's never about just one way taking. Al-Qur'an al-Kareem wa sunnah sharifa teaches us that giving is living. The more you give, the more you take. Literally, that's why we call as zakah zakah. I don't want to go into this, but you know, as zakah means what? Zakah means when you give money in our mustalah. Like it means what linguistically? It means to have more growth. Qad aflaha man tazakka, the point. Huh? More. How do you, what do you mean? I give, it means I have less, but I have more. That's the whole point. And that's why Iblis didn't understand. And that's why we want to separate the understanding of Adam from the understanding of Iblis. That's why when Allah told Iblis, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, li Adam. Now that Adam went through his path of perfection, which is our path, your path, my path. 
which means we will be making mistakes and the way to our perfection is actually making the mistake and then repenting and going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not having the mistake take us down and plunge us further. The mistake can be used basically as a platform from where you can jump and spring away from your imperfection. It shows you where your weakness are, where your weakness is, and then it gives you the platform to go beyond. And that's why Adam alayhi salam, the path of, of perfection to him was perfection from perfection, let's say. Yani Adam went from fadl ila afdal, wa min husnan ila ahsan, wa min kamalin ila akmal. So we get out of the kalami issues in the sense but the point here is what? The point is Iblis. So obviously after Adam passed the, passed the test, the test was what? The test is how to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Adam passed the test, Allah ordered the malaika to make sujood to him. You thought that the khilafah or the representation of Allah is in being but the representation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah chooses whomever he wants you know the whole story I don't have time to go through it but when Allah ordered them to do sujood to Adam what did, he, what did they say? Al Malaika went into sujood. Illa Iblis Aba was takbar. Except Iblis. Ya Iblis, why weren't you among those who made sujood? The first thing he says, Qala ana khayrun min. Ya Allah, I am better than him. You created me. Khalaqtahu min. Khalaqtani min nar wa khalaqtahu min teen. You created me from fire and you created him from clay. Now, Reason again, we're saying this is to distinguish the self, the trait of the essence of the self in the sense. The question was not about, Allah did not ask Iblis about who's better. The question was, why didn't he make sujood? Nobody's asking you who's better, whose substance or intrinsic material is better. Number one. Number two, who told you, Ya Iblis, that fire is better than clay? I mean, who, who told you this? But that's exactly the point. Fire has a strong power. But that power in fire is a power of destruction usually. And clay has a power. But the power of clay is construction. You build with clay. And that's exactly the difference between Adam and Iblis. Adam is construction. استعمركم فيها القرآن الكريم says asked you to build earth and Iblis is destruction he is there to destroy and that's where you need to separate if you're positively contributing or if you're negatively contributing where do you belong in the lines and furthermore to also distinguish between the traits of Iblis طبعاً, or the traits of Adam as our father and where we belong it's about that when Adam alayhi salam, Allah says, وَعَصَى آدَمُ رَبَّهُ فَغَوَى ثُمَّ اجْتَبَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ وَهَدَى Then his Lord, so Adam did not follow or عَصَى آدَمُ رَبَّهُ فَغَوَى Adam disobeyed the command and then he was off the path in a sense. And then Allah says, Allah says in another ayah, Adam was in tawbah and repentance, realized what he did immediately. There was that shu'ur, as I call it. Shu'ur means what? Still feeling. Feeling. So it was Masiya where Allah says, Wa'asa Adam Rabbahu. Like and notice when Allah talks about Shaitan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna Shaitana kana lil-Rahmani asiyya. A 
الشيطان was عصي not معصية it's just a sin that happened ولقد عهدنا إلى آدم من قبل فنسي ولم نجد له عزما Allah says we have accounted Adam and he was forgetful or he forgot لكن when Allah talks about Iblis he says إن الشيطان كان الرحمن عصية he was ever disobedient to Allah why notice what he says he says uh, if you do this to me ya allah i'm not going to make sujood to him yani as if iblis is telling allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you is the creation but the command is not yours only you created no problem Qala Rabbi, because he says Rabbi. But the creation is to you, but to the command in over the creation is not just to you. I need to also be involved in that sense. That's why Allah says, amr. Not just al khalq but to him belongs the command. He is Rabbul Alameen. He is the Lord of the creation. The creation. So you see how this asiyah means he took ma'asiya as a way of life, as a message in life, as a mission of life. Versus Adam, this was a sin. But Iblis, he took it as a mission of life. That's why he says, "Qala Rabbi bima aghwaytani." Or, or, la aghwiyannahum ajma'in. The rest of the ayah. I don't want to go through the whole ayah. I will destroy them all. I will misguide them all. As if you don't give me my way, I will destroy everything. Human traits and sometimes? Yeah. Iblisi traits in some humans. Shaitani traits in some humans. If I don't have it my way, I'll destroy everything. There is no more feeling that what's right, what's wrong. Right becomes wrong and wrong becomes right. That's why Allah says for Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ When they're told, don't do fasad, don't do corruption on earth. قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ We are but people who do good. The meaning of the ayah. But then Allah answers, أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ Indeed, they are the people of corruption and fasad. That's how Allah identifies them. But what's the problem, Ya Allah? وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ But they no more, no longer have a feeling. They do the sin, they do evil. They don't even feel that it's wrong anymore. They even lost that feeling. And that's why how they, fo they followed the footsteps of shaitan. Another thing, let me finish before because the time is up. The blame game. It's always everybody else's fault. Oh, it's because these people do this, because they are so powerful, because they have this, because this, 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 because she did this, because he did this. Iblis did exactly the same thing. Qala Rabbi bima aghwaytani. Oh Allah, because you misguided me, I will do all these corruption now. I will misguide everyone. Wait a minute. What do you mean because you misguided me? Allah ordered you to do sujood. You refused to do sujood. Who misguided you? Allah gave you the opportunity. It's blaming, shifting the blame. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that sense where he's telling them, you misguided me, so in turn I'm going to do this. It's not my fault, it's your fault. And that's another lesson we can take to separate the essence of the traits of the self from the shaitani trait. The shaitani traits are never going to be, should never be, the role model for us to follow. But the Adami trait or the children of Adam trait, he is your father. And the way of your father is the way. It's not the Malaika. 
nor is it shaitan. That is not your path of perfection. That's not your path of getting things. The way of Adam is the path of perfection, your father. And that's why Allah honored Adam so much that he made. So in your eyes, if you think that the, the malaika are so honorable, he made the malaika do sujood to Adam, your father. Because he went through his path of perfection. Through that mistake and then obviously repentance and seeking closeness to Allah and oftentimes mistakes may become the step that brings you closer to Allah if you follow the path of Adam if you follow the path of Iblis it will only take you further away from Allah أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله وصلى الله على محمد وآله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته